Today I'm gonna niche slap you like Alex Harmozy says for doing too much. We're gonna discuss why contractors who are doing too much are broke. Within the last two years, I traveled to over 100 contractors. I'm with the contractors on the phone every single week, and I see the tendency. I see this happening in our industry a lot. Some contractors are doing very little, they do less, but in the reality, they do more of volume. And some contractors are general contractors, remodelers, they doing too much. They're in every trade, they're doing five, six, seven, sometimes 10 trades, and they are broke. Their profit margins are very, very small, usually three, four, five percent. They're trying to grow, but they don't know what they're doing wrong. And I wanna to explain to you why doing less is doing more, what you can do to improve your margins, and why being the jack of all trades is not always the best thing. We'll talk about meaning of being jack of all trades at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about psychology. Let's talk about thinking and mentality of going into all trades. I personally think that the biggest reason, the reason number one, why you picking up new trades is your weakness. You're trying to cover and hide your weakness in business, your weak spot in general, because if you cannot figure out how to scale something, you're oftentimes thinking that doing something else learning new skill, getting in the new space will help you diversify your um, portfolio, if you will, and you will get more jobs. Some people do it from insecurities. They think that by doing more, offering more, they have job security if it's always plan B kind of scenario. If there's no drywall jobs, I can do painting. If there's no painting, I can do flooring. Good thinking, but broken. You probably have seen this clip. I absolutely love it. Look at this guy, look at this quality. I'm gonna make a very good point here. True master. Note he has one tool. everything about this clip. This guy is master of one. He mastered his craft. He has one or two tools. You can see how efficient he is. This trade today, 20, 30 years later, is nothing look like this. Today you have a Dremel tool, you have five, six tools in your tool bags. And here's the, another thing too. Even within the same trade, we're always looking for shortcuts. I see it too often where guys uh, have brain freeze moments because they don't know what to grab. You have your one tool, but you also have 500 other tools for the job. And sometimes because you can do the same job with the two or three tools, you don't know which one to grab. Same mentality goes for the business. You don't know what to do to make money, what trade to pick, what job to sell. Imagine selling drywall jobs every single day. You know your cost, you know your efficiency, you can predict your numbers, but imagine if this guy would be doing drywall and next week he would be bidding flooring jobs. Week after that he would be bidding um, painting jobs. Week after that he might be doing siding jobs. Would he be as good as he is in this video? Probably not. And on a bigger scale, I see it with the successful contractors. Contractors who are very successful in one trade, like number one guy in HVC, number one company in the roofing, number one company uh, in their initials. They are so good at saying no to others. They do have those opportunities. They can install windows, they can install skylights, they can install siding and gutters, but they're staying focused and they do what they do best. And when they do that, they do 40 million, 100 million, 500 million of that one trade. Absolutely amazing. And little guys are staying small and staying broke. And the reason number two for that is because they have a mentality that grass is always greener somewhere else. Other trade usually look 
more attracting from money perspective. Oftentimes when we see someone successful in the trade, for example, let's say you're a roofer and you see a gutter guy is killing it. You see a gutter guy doing a couple million dollars a year and making healthy profits. Maybe you think that you should be doing gutters now. You open the gutters. As a matter of fact, this week, I just got a text message from someone who tried to have gutter uh, um, company within the house, um, hire gutter guys and it didn't work out. He tried it for two years. We tried it two years ago and he said the best way is to subcontract it. Now gutter companies can make really good money. Roofing companies can make really good money. But when a roofing company try to add the service of gutters, usually they fail. It's different business, it's different trade. You have to market it. You have to own that space. Now, if you want to open a gutter company, that's my recommendation. If you want to open ice dam removal company, flooring company, open that company, but run it as a separate business. Adding it to your existing business will overwhelm this business and will probably never grow that business. I want to quickly mention directory.com, the service that we have. We love to give good recommendations to the homeowners. We have four or 5,000 unique visitors per month on our website. We have a brand new website just launched two weeks ago. Today, homeowners have their own logins. They are users of the website. They come looking for recommendations from us. We recommend all trades. We're desperately needing flooring contractors, siding contractors, and HVC contractors. If you're one of those, sign up, check out directory.com. You don't have to pay per leads. We never sell you any information. You pay 3% only on the jobs that you're getting from directory.com after you're getting paid. The best way to connect with the homeowner and the best place for the homeowners to find contractors because every transaction is $20,000 guarantee. Nobody gonna steal your money. Nobody gonna run away uh, and not finish the job. We will pursue those contractors and we will always make it right with the homeowners. But we need good guys who knows what they're doing. Hopefully they're not doing too much and hopefully they're a jack of one trades, not of all trades. Now I wanna explain doing less is doing more concept. The best breakthroughs in my life, in my construction career, happen when I cancel service, not to add the service. As a contractor, you will always be tempting to add something else. Steve Jobs, when he came back to Apple, Apple fired Steve Jobs and years later they got in trouble and they rehired him. First thing he did, he canceled a lot of product lines. That's the first thing that smartest marketer, smartest owner, smartest visionary did to Apple. Today, the biggest company in the world. Now. When it comes to small businesses, it happens all the time. For example, years ago, I worked for Papa John's. During the day, I work at a cabinet shop. At night, I work at a uh, Papa John's delivering pizzas. And I remember we were counting our sales late at night. Average Papa John's would make two, three thousand dollars per small location in the middle of nowhere, still a couple thousand dollars revenue. If you think about Papa John's business model, very impressive. The same goes to all big franchises. Their menu is minimalist. They don't, they're not in business of selling salads, selling too many things, right? As a matter of fact, if you call them and you ask them, do you have this or that? The answer probably would be no. They specialize in pizzas. They can customize the pizza, but that's about it. As a result, they will save few pennies on the cardboard boxes and it will transfer to millions in sales because doing less is doing more. When you do less, when you do less activity, you can become really good at it. Like you can be number one drywall contractors and you're gonna start buying um, drywall in bulk. I remember working in a cabinet shop. All we did was cabinets. We were buying plywoods at six, seven dollars per sheet where everybody else were getting 20, 30 dollars. Now, you cannot compete with a cabinet shop who makes cabinets and sells kitchens at $15,000, $20,000, who pays six, seven dollars per plywood. When you do less, you are more profitable, you're more efficient. The rule goes everywhere. In auto uh, manufacturers, if you do one car and you do it really well, you're gonna make a lot of money versus if you do seven cars. In 90s, Saturn has number one sedan. It was ugly sedan, but they, they were selling over 300,000 of those sedans per year. What Saturn did, they made huge mistake. They added other lines. 
and 10 years later they have seven models and they're still are selling a little bit over 300,000 cars a year what, what's cheaper to produce seven models or produce one model and sell 300,000 of them well the same thing is happening to contractors you can focus on let's say floors and you can become number one floor guy in town instead you're gonna finish basements, you're gonna do painting, you're gonna be doing trims, maybe install cabinets. When you offer five, seven trades, you're not gonna be number one on Google, probably in none of those categories. You're probably gonna spend a lot of money on advertising, you're gonna have a labor shortage, you're not gonna get good deals and materials because you don't have volume. As a result, you might be facing 3% net profit margins instead of 10 why because you're doing too much that's how contractors are staying broke that's how car manufacturers are staying broke and that's how big businesses staying broke doing less is doing more i want to finish with exception to this rule original phrase jack of all trades and master of one it's a great phrase but it's not a full phrase full phrase goes like this jack of all trades master of none but oftentimes better than master of one there are people out there who's probably watching this video who can do five six trades and be extremely successful you can be better than individual guys who's doing one trade and i've seen it power home remodeling they do windows they do gutters they do roofing and you know they're like 700 million dollar company there's art to the science there is a secret in this madness you can definitely build a huge company by offering few services and the exception of the rule would be to offer services that complements your main business for example if you're a drywall company it makes sense for you to be a finishing company and maybe painting company because those two goes together if you're a flooring company you can also do uh, you can install trim you can install bait boards maybe some crown moldings because you already in houses they do require all of those so you don't have to sell them separately it's just addition just like in the restaurants you know if you sell burgers you sell fries and coke if you're a roofing contractor you can add gutter covers you can add gutters because those goes together now roofing and windows different categories roofing and siding different categories just because you're outside and because you see that people need decks or people need fences doesn't mean that you should be opening those businesses there are some people out there who can do that who can have several categories and be better than people who only have one category it comes down to your capacity how organized you are how good of the leader you are and how good you are at building a business comment below what you guys think comment below if you agree that doing less is doing more and comment below if you think that your problems is because you are doing too much i've been at one business two years ago their profit margins were 3%. They were a big remodeling company, 11 employees. They were doing many, many projects every year. On $3 million, they were netting 3%. They added roofing business and they started being real profitable. What I'm teaching, what I'm showing you works. You just have to be open-minded and try different things. In my personal experience, the best thing happened when I canceled service, that's where I've seen real money coming in. When I stopped doing remodeling projects, when I stopped going inside houses, because I was that guy. I flipped 11 homes in 2016. I finished four basements a year prior. I've done those, but I've never made real money. I was profitable, but profit margins were too short. That's what I teach in roofing school. Check out, I'm gonna put links to my programs below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.